What are you seeing in the boardrooms that you're on the board of? And, and if you were running one of these high growth companies for the past year, what are the first two or three things you do? I mean, the first thing you got to do is look at your burn multiple. I mean, how much are you burning relative to how much incremental ARR are you generating? You look at fast, they raised 120 million, what, like a year ago. They're out of money now. So they burnt 10 million a month, like you said. Here's the crazy thing. If they had just slammed on the brakes three or four months ago, when we were talking on the spot about the coming downturn, they could still have $30 million in the bank. That's a lot of money. The only reason it doesn't seem like a lot of money is because they've been burning $100 million over the past year. But objectively, $30 million is a gross Series B, which is actually a lot of money for a company that only has 100000 in revenue. So they could have saved that company if they had slammed on the brakes three months ago and rationalized the cost structure, and they didn't. So they hit the wall at 100 miles an hour. Who's responsible when something like that happens, David? Because we've all seen it. What is yeah, the suspension I mean, look, this, of disbelief that creates this kind of stupidity? That, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, you've got, you, you've got people who are kind of drinking the Kool-Aid and there's nobody advising them to stop or if there is, they're not listening. I mean, look, PayPal had this situation back in uh, 2000, the year 2000, uh, right after the dot-com crash. We were burning $10 million a month, like fast. We had no revenue and no business model. Okay, <laughs> and we had said the, the service would be al always free. We had four months basically of life and we pulled up on the throttle. And what we did is we basically introduced um, paid accounts. We started charging transaction fees and we cut, the we cut the cost structure of the company and we made that last $40 million last a lot longer than four months. It lasted until we could then do another fundraise the following year. And we were able to then raise with good numbers, real revenue, a business model, et cetera. So you know, and that was because we were just paying attention to the changing environment. The world had changed from sort of the pre dot com crash, you know, 1999, your business model didn't matter, your margins didn't matter, revenue didn't matter, none of that stuff mattered. All that mattered was growth. But by, you know, mid 2000, everything had changed. So you have to be attuned to what the fundraising environment is looking like. And if you're a high burn company right now that's not generating a lot of revenue to go along with it, you better slam on the brakes and rationalize your cost structure before it's too late. David, tell me, like, wh what do you think is going on in this board meeting? I mean, like, this is a group of incompetent, incompetence. <laughs> I don't even know who's on the board because Stripe led two rounds, I think. And so... Is look, that when you part of it, David, that you, you... And listen, we all love Stripe. It's a great company. It's, it's a legendary company. But one of the reasons we don't like to have strategics is maybe they're not thinking the same as a, a proper capital allocator. And for them, this is peanuts. Right, exactly. No, look, the, the reason why a strategic why investor, sorry, go ahead. I think the reason why a strategic investor invests is because it's strategic for them. I mean, it was in Stripe's interest to try and back a winner in the whole e-commerce checkout line sort of payment space. And so they did that. And I don't even know if they had a board seat.